I'm Dan with DealSargent.com, and what I have here are two LED upgrades. Um, this one is a Cree R5 single mode LED upgrade, and this one is a Cree R2 five mode upgrade. Um, the R2 five mode upgrade is going to be around 250, um, possibly 300 lumens, depends on how much uh, current you put through it. Um, with the R5 single mode, um, it gets significantly brighter, closer to about 450 um, lumens with, uh, again, depending on how much current you put through it. Um, now the reason uh, you might want to consider an LED upgrade is because, number one, they, they're a lot brighter than an incandescent equivalent, um, and they're more efficient so they don't put out as much heat and they have significantly longer run times. Now, word of caution, before we go any further, I want to point out that you have to make sure that the voltage that your flashlight puts out won't fry the bulb. If you have the Cree R2 5 mode, that one can only handle up to 8.4 volts. So if your flashlight has three of these uh, 3 volt CR123A batteries, then you've got a problem if you're trying to use it with a CR, uh, sorry, with a Cree R2 bulb because that one can only handle 8.4 volts. So make sure that your flashlight, if it has two batteries, you're fine. If it has three or more, you have to be using it with a Cree R5. So let's go ahead and start, and just to show um, the different compatibility, we'll take this LED and we'll upgrade it. This right now has a Cree Q5 in it. Um, the Q5 uh, can get anywhere from 180 to you know 250, kind of depends. Um, but we're going to go ahead and upgrade it to the. We'll we'll do the the R5 single mode, and you can see all I do is I just pull out the one bulb. With this one, I don't do anything. They come with the spring on. I leave the spring on, drop it into the flashlight, hence the name drop in, and give it a click. And I've got a, a new flashlight that's uh, twice as bright as my old one. And all I had to do was just replace the bulb. Now, with the Surefire flashlights, it's going to require um, a little bit more work. Let's start with the 6P. Um, again, an aluminum flashlight. I'll just leave that one there. So with the 6P, you can see it works just fine. We'll go ahead and pull the bezel and lens assembly off. And just unscrew it. We'll take out the old bulb, which is just an incandescent bulb. And if you look inside um, the flashlight, you'll see that with the 6P, um, you can see plenty of bare aluminum showing. And that bare aluminum basically makes contact with the body of the drop-in to complete the circuit. Um, and because there's so much aluminum there, there's so much aluminum and brass down here, uh, it's not going to be a problem completing the circuit. So uh, what we'll actually do is for a lot of the Surefire flashlights, you'll want to remove the large outer metal spring. So I'll just give that a pull. I'm going to just pop that off. Put the drop in right in there. And we'll just twist it down tight. And I have just quadrupled the output on my... Uh, flashlight. The nice thing is it's going to run a lot longer, uh, it's a lot brighter, puts out a lot less heat. So an instant upgrade, there's no need to go out and buy an, a whole new flashlight. Um, now we'll look at the uh, G2. Now the reason we have issues with this one is because it's a plastic body. Um, and because of that plastic body, uh, it's a little bit more, it can sometimes, um, about 80% of the time it works just fine, there's nothing you have to do. Um, but uh, occasionally, you have to do something to make sure you're completing the circuit. And for starters, we'll go ahead and use that same drop-in that we put in these other two flashlights. So this is, uh, again, we leave the spring off on uh, most of your Surefire flashlights. Just put it on there. And if you're lucky, you just pull the spring off, put it in, tighten it down, and then just click the switch and you have light. Um, so not a problem, but I did dig through our inventory and I was able to find a bulb. I was able to kind of replicate some of the problems that customers are having. Um, and I also got it to demonstrate the different, um, different bulbs we have. So this is a Cree um, R2-5 mode. So with this, you get high, medium, low strobe and SOS. Um, some people really like that, others don't. Um, it's kind of up to the operator. Some people like having those additional functions, others just want to have you know, the flashlight with plenty of light um, with just the press of a switch and nothing else. So again, because it's a Surefire flashlight, we're going to pull off the spring, put the drop in in, and it looks like my bezel here is coming loose. We'll, 
I'll play with that later. But basically just put it back on. And then I've already tested this one, but there's no light. Um, and if this happens, don't worry. Uh, the bulb, um, we test almost every bulb before it goes out. So it's not the bulb, it's just we need to complete the circuit. There's a few different ways that we can do that. Um, basically what we're doing is because this is a plastic body, um, it's a little bit harder to make sure that the circuit's complete. And if you look inside um, a Surefire flashlight, the G2, you'll see that it's plastic, but then there's a little aluminum liner um, on the inside in the battery compartment that runs down to the switch to complete the circuit. And what we need to do is basically bridge that gap um, that exists between the, um, that sleeve and the drop-in uh, body. Um, what I found before on some flashlights, when they put that sleeve in, a little bit of plastic or crud kind of gets um, around the top ring of it, and that's going to prevent it from completing the circuit. So you want to make sure that it's clean, there's nothing in there that's going to um, you know, prevent it from making contact with the drop-in. And after you've done that, the first thing that I typically recommend is get the spring that you took off, and you're just going to cut it down. I already cut this one down, um, but I, you can see I cut off about a loop and a half. And I like this modification uh, you know, to try first because you don't have to go out and get anything else. All you need is just a pair of wire cutters um, to just cut the wire. And so I just cut the spring down a little bit. Then I'm going to reinstall it back onto the drop-in. And what that will allow me to do is that spring basically will reach down in a little bit farther into the flashlight and uh, make contact with that, uh, that sleeve there. Um, and so that should be all we need to make this work with the, with the G2. So, let's see. Well, this is good. I can uh, show you some other steps. One thing that I would recommend is when you, uh, when you cut this down, just kind of make sure that the spring, um, some of the time it gets a little bit bent. Um, so just make sure everything's tight. And I'll actually just kind of bend the spring a little bit more so it has a slightly tighter diameter um, so that uh, it'll, I can make sure that it's going to reach in there really tight. We'll try this again. If this doesn't work, then I'll show you the next um, thing that I recommend. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. Tighten that down nice and tight. And there we go. So now we can see it's working just fine, and you can even see the additional mode. So that's a low mode, there's strobe, and then that's SOS. But let's, uh, so now that we see that that works just fine, let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you, uh, just in case that doesn't work, what other modifications you can make. Um, you can get creative with this. Basically anything that you can think of that'll bridge that gap. Um, this is, uh, so again, I always prefer to just start by cutting down that spring. Um, and then the next thing you can do is just get a little piece of aluminum foil, just, just like that. Um, and what we're going to do is, is uh, basically extend that tube up a little bit um, further into the head of the flashlight. So I've already kind of made a little funnel here. And it just kind of helps to get the idea of what, what uh, diameter we need by just kind of slipping it around the, the battery. And then I'll just slip that in there, the whole assembly. and just kind of push it down, make sure that I'm not uh, short circuiting it. So I want to keep the aluminum foil away from the little positive terminal on the battery. So now that I've got the aluminum foil in there, I just put the drop in back in. Tighten this down all the way. And if I did everything right, I just push the switch and I've got instant light. So hopefully one of those two methods will make the drop-in work with your flashlight, whether it's a Surefire G2 or really any other flashlight for that matter. And one thing that I always tell customers is keep in mind, it may require a little bit of effort right now, but because this is an LED bulb, uh, it, it will last a lifetime. So you're not going to have to worry about doing this every time you need to replace the bulb because you're not going to have to do that the way you did with an incandescent bulb. Um, it's brighter, it lasts a lot longer because it is LED, it's more shock resistant. There's just so many more reasons. That's why all the manufacturers are moving away from incandescence into LED. But the nice thing is you don't have to go and buy a new flashlight. You can use the one that you already have. So hopefully that works with your flashlight and good luck. Thank you.